Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 21st. First off, before I get started, I'd like to apologize to Josh Kraus for mispronouncing his name. That's uh, on the article I did last week about the 3D printable heart. Um, I made a mistake on that. Sorry about that. I apologize. Um, usually I mess up on the really complicated names, but I usually don't get confused between the difference between Joshua and John. First up, this was sent in by, let me get the credit right on this one too. This was sent in by my friend Steve Arsenault. This is the DARPA challenge. They're doing a DARPA robotics challenge. As a matter of fact, it started, and I'll give you the link to the YouTube video site. What they've been doing is running the challenge live, but most people don't want to sit around for like nine, ten hours worth of streaming video. So what they've been doing is putting the recordings up since December 20th. And... Uh, this way, if you get them as recordings, you can skip around because a lot of it is just kind of boring and dry, and probably if you're not really into robotics, it's all boring and dry. But I do like the fact that they put the recorded ones up. Well, the first robot that we're going to talk about here is the Valkyrie NASA robot, and they've been really cagey up until just before the DARPA challenge of letting anybody know anything about it. It's uh, the coolest looking of the two robots I've seen that are going to be competing, um, at least the two that I'm aware of so far. And uh, it also has interchangeable parts that's kind of cool, like the, the right and the left arm. You can change them off. They're, uh, you can take it off of one with just a bolt and a connector and put it on the other side. So um, that's one of their secrets about their robot is the fact that you can uh, repair it real easily in the field. I guess any uh, repairable component can be changed out within 15 minutes. Uh, one thing about it, even though it's really cool looking, at least what they've shown so far, it's kind of really slow and clunky. And what this robot's going to have to do under some form of human control is do human-like tasks such as climb a ladder, drive a car, walk on uneven terrain, open and close a valve, things like that. So, uh, yeah, this robot's the coolest looking of the two I've seen, but kind of really slow moving, really deliberate moving. But you never know. This is what they're letting us see up front. So um, in the actual trials, who knows what it is. But the one that I think is really cool is the Atlas robot. Now, in both of these links, I'm going to give you to the um, Valkyrie robot and the Atlas robot. There's a video you can play where they, the team give a demonstration of what the, the robot can do. Now, the Atlas robot's kind of creepy and scary looking. I imagine if it was a dark hall and it was coming after you, you'd probably run away because it doesn't look very human friendly, but um, moves a lot more fluid, a lot more faster, so more fa a lot, lot faster. So, uh, yeah, I think of the two, really, that would be the one I'd put my money on, but uh, who knows, I haven't had a chance to go over the videos. I'm probably in the next few days, as I have time, I'm going to skip around and look at and see what the challenge is actually uh, going to be like, but uh, really super cool. Um, I think it's about time that we got into some really serious robotics challenges, even if it's, um, you know, they're not fully aut autonomous, but um, still, I think it's really kind of cool. This next one, this was sent by my friend O2BigKev. This is an electric motorcycle. This is at the Salon de la Moto in Paris. This is a 200 horsepower electric machine. I'll show you a picture here. And uh, weighs about 772 pounds. 200 horsepower, 12.8 kilowatt hour battery. I guess the performance on this thing is just phenomenal. Let me see if I can get you some of the specs here. 7.7 uh, .7 feet long, uh, 200 newton meters torque. Uh, what else? It can accelerate 0 to 100 miles per hour in 5.9 seconds. Now, in case you're figuring on buying one of these, they're hand-built vehicles for a select clientele, they say. They don't even give a price here, so to me, that's telling me that if you have to ask how much it costs, you probably can't afford it. But still, something really kind of cool, and they showed it off at the show here. And next up, this was sent... Um, by my friend Aaron, Gentleman's Nines Crypto Locker. Now, this is kind of an important deal. This has been, it's still not really super widespread. It's been hitting small businesses pretty heavily, and a few of them have even had to pay some ransom about this. This is a virus that encrypts your files. How it does tend to sneak its payload in is it sends you some kind of a email saying that there's a problem with a financial account or something like that and trying to get you to click and open up a PDF file. Well, since a lot of people leave their extensions turned off, on their computer as far as their operating system settings. What happens is it's a, a .pdf.exe file and it starts running. Now you do have, if you if you figure out and know what is happening 
or you know something like that you can shut it down and it will just be limited damage it'll create but if you let the thing run it basically not only encrypts all of your documents on your computer but it'll reach out on your network and encrypt all of your uh, important files on your network um, and attached hard drive files too so you'll end up pretty much losing everything they uh, some software in the past that has been ransomware like this that have done encryption they've been able to find some type of a weakness in the software and create eventually create a key so that people could get their files back they're thinking in this case this is uh, no mistakes the author that uh, created this thing did it right and uh, unless you can actually recover the key from the company which tells you you have to pay something like three hundred dollars US you're not getting your data back and even if you do pay there's a chance you're not getting your data back they say they'll keep the key for 72 hours in a countdown now I've seen a video and uh, I saw where one person actually did successfully pay the money and get their files back I've even heard a news report saying that a police department got hit by the virus and they paid the ransom money and got their data back but um, that's a bad thing when you start paying ransom money for stuff like this it just encourages people to do it even more and uh, I've got an important video link that I'm going to give you guys too. And these are two people I personally have met. This is Leo Laporte and Steve Gibson talking this little bit from Leo's show. Um, I got a chance to talk to him. The last conference I was at where I met him, I got a chance to talk to Steve Gibson for about 30 minutes. A very, very uh, great guy and one of the fathers, actually, I think, of antivirus and fighting back against different viruses and also some. Um, he developed some really good hardware uh, rescuing software that I've used in the past myself. But I got a chance to talk to him. And uh, just, just if you get a chance, watch this video of him and Leo Laporte talking about what this crypto locker virus is, is all about. Now, one really positive thing if you're a Mac user, so far the crypto locker does not affect Mac users at all. It's just for uh, Windows machines. So. Um, until somebody changes something or something, uh, you know, some other copycats or something like that modify it. Um, if you're a Mac user, you're pretty much immune from it. So that ends up working good for you that way. So anyway, um, oh, one more thing I wanted to add too. Now, if you for some reason think you want to um, try to learn how to um, crack encryption, and maybe somebody can actually, somebody out there that's a real genius can find a mistake in this crypto locker and and make a universal key. So far, no experts have been able to find, but if you just want a little bit of a challenge, this is from Triumph Ant. This is a Telegram, a secure messaging service app, has offered a reward for the first person who can crack its encryption. So if you want to give it a try, what they're going to do is they're going to um, take encrypted traffic using their encrypted method and leave it open to the public so that you can watch it as the encrypted traffic goes back and forth. And um, all you have to do is just uh, a few simple things just to show them that you've successfully unencrypted it. And, uh, yeah, you get your financial um, award. Let's actually, uh, I didn't have this up and running here, but let's uh, go there and see if I can remember what the, I forgot what the financial reward was here. So we'll go to the site real quick. Hopefully my browser is operating fast. Yeah, two, $200,000, so uh, not a real uh, shabby award reward there so if you get a chance and you want to try and you want to make two hundred thousand dollars all you have to do is follow their rules and prove that you have unencrypted their traffic and uh, yeah I'd make a nice Christmas present for you wouldn't it so anyway I'm gonna cut it short this week because it's Christmas week I hope everybody has a very Merry Christmas and uh, I will catch you next week <laughs>